Celtic Speed Scottish Mini Cooper Cup 2011. Welcome to Cadwell Park for the Celtic Speed Scottish Mini Cooper Cup. Now we have travelled south to the Lincolnshire circuit to see how the guys and girls get on at this fantastic track. It's incredibly twisty, it's really demanding and very, very difficult to pass here. Now Vic Covey and David and Tim Slay have all raced here before, so let's see how they get on. It's over to you, Richard. Thanks, Sasha. Championship leader is Vic Covey by five points from David Slay, with Tim Slay in third, Chris Smiley fourth, Kyle Reid is in fifth place and Steve Clark down in six. The Newcomers' Championship, that's led by Tim Slay with Carl Reed second from Steve Clark, Murray Muir next, then Adam Leach and Kenny McLeod in six. The ladies have their own points table as well. That currently is led by Elaine Marshall with Fiona Wallace in second from Emma Bruce, Louise Flitton in fourth, then Steph McMurdo and Gemma Dreelan in sixth. Today's grid looks like this. We've got on pole position David Slay with Vic Covey Jr. second. So the championship leader starting from the outside of the grid. Then it's Chris Smiley and Tim Slay on row two. Kyle Reid and Kenny McLeod make up row three. Fourth row, well, that sees Alan Walk lining up seventh on the grid. Then Hamish Brandon, Fiona Wallace and Michael Falconer on row five. Emma Bruce and Elaine Marshall on the sixth row of the grid. The seventh race of the season then for the Celtic Speed Scottish Mini Cooper Cup of 2011. Pole position is David Slay. He's on the outside of the circuit because the first corner here is a left-hander. That's Coffee's corner. On his outside, Vic Covey Jr. Chris Smiley and Tim Slay on row two. All the cars, I think, just about in position. The yellow and white car at the back, you can see, is Elaine Marshall. Ladies' championship leader is Elaine. Some... Real big undulations here. Look how high up our camera is at the last corner, turn 18 barn. Out goes the five second board. The grid, incidentally, hidden behind the trees, just right of shot there. There are the cars ready for the start of our race here at Camwell. Great start from David Slay. Not hooked up too badly either for Vic Covey Jr. Tim Slay looks down the inside. Chris Smiley in 22 coming up into second place on the inside as they come up to Coffees. That could well work for him. There's a bit of con body contact there. Possibly Alan Walk, who's made a great start ahead of Hamish Brandon. Leader through, though. It's David Slay leading. Second place is Vic Covey. Good recovery from Covey. Covey and Chris Smiley in, set in third place. I think maybe about to lose third position. Yes, he does lose third position because up the inside goes Tim Slay in car number four. Kenny McLeod's in the mix in car number, number six. Great start by Kenny McLeod. So good to see the number six car up at the sharp end as well. And Kenny McLeod coming down the inside of Tim Slay, he tags him! And the Athena car goes round, Tim Slay's got to try and rejoin, I think that was Alan Walk who recovered to the outside, through on the inside goes Fiona Wallace in car 17, followed by Michael Falconer, then Elaine Marshall and Emma Bruce at the back of the field. Oh, sideways moment there for David Slay! Slay's going to go into the barrier! Oh, I think he might have skimmed it across the track, across in front of Vic Covey. Covey and Slay were very, very lucky there that they didn't collide. Slay goes off, the barrier was beckoning there. How he kept it out, I will never know, and probably he will never know as well. Onto the grass, he's, he's uh, recovered composure completely by that point in fourth position. How, do you, how does that happen and you recover to fourth? That's a great recovery from David Slay, but the pole man has got all the work to do now. Down in fourth position. Look at this, brilliant stuff from Kenny McLeod, who's coming under a bit of pressure from Alan Walk. Walk in the 14 car, Hamish Brandon in the Panda car in pursuit, and through goes Tim Slay, Tim Slay recovering. As they go up the mountain through all bends, Tim Slay makes up a position. Coming through like a bad curry, to quote another driver from another championship, he's uh, making a good recovery, is Tim Slay. Hamish Brandon looking uh, cool and composed in his machine, the number eight car. You can see the red and white car just uh, down towards the back, the back of this little gaggle. Blue flags being shown to the slug. It was Alan Walk's car, wasn't it, that lost a bit of body work. It comes through, you can see the, the, the front on there as they went through the mix there. There's a bit of extra air cooling on Walk's machine. Always in the wars, Alan, it does seem to be. 
great driver, great personality as well. Enjoys his racing, one of the older drivers in the championship. Won't thank me for saying that. As we go back to the top three, Vic Covey Jr. getting away now. Chris Smiley in second place. Third place is David Slay, who's got ahead of Kyle Reid, the white and black, or the white car with the black roof and the green mirrors. Kyle Reid, newcomer to the championship this year, newcomer to motor racing this year. Mighty impressive driver is Kyle Reid, and uh, maybe if he gets a bit of backing somewhere along the line, might uh, climb up the ranks and uh, do some other stuff as well. But this is a great view of this circuit. The onboards really add so much to the coverage here at Cadwell Park. Coming down into Mansfield Corner, the eighth turn on the circuit, and then a run down through turns nine and ten before they climb up eleven and twelve, which leads to the mountain. You see how hard, how high this climb is here. In actual fact, it, it doesn't look as steep on the camera as it is in real life. It's a real, real climb there. And uh, very easy to get puffed out if you're walking it, for sure. The paddock on the circuit is on the outside there, just past the spectators that we saw. Then the cars go down through hall bends into the hairpin, turn 17, penultimate corner on the track. Slight downhill run here into barn corner, turn 18. That's where David Slay is trying to... Still closed down, Chris Smiley kicks up a bit of dirt, up across the line they go, picking up the pit signals. Covey it is that leads, David Slay is the fastest of the, well, fastest of the whole field actually at the moment. And that's going to walk well for his recovery, you can just see to the right of shot where the circuit doubles back on itself. Covey still leading, up towards Charlie's corner and then the long, long run down Park straight, downhill initially and then climb up towards Park. Chris Smiley still in second position, David Slay in third, and Vic Covey Jr. with a pretty good lead at the moment, four or five lengths, he'll be fairly happy with that one. Kyle Reid still running in fourth place, Tim Slay trying to make his recovery. The way the championship's panned out so far, predominantly the championship based at Knock Hill Circuit, with six events there throughout the course of the year, a couple of away rounds. Uh, this is, of course, one of those, but a really good championship to come into because you can learn, once you've got the hang of Knock Hill Circuit, it's a really good thing to, to base at one circuit because it's not the circuit you're worrying about, it's learning the car, and you can really learn both at the same time and get some consistency going. And then you've got a couple of away rounds, as we said, thrown in for good measure, which is great. We haven't been here to Cabwell for a couple of years. Last time we were at Cabwell, the uh, two races were won by uh, Rambo Rowan, Michael Rowan and Chris Knox. I think it was Michael Round's first win, possibly, if memory serves correctly. And uh, neither of those two guys in the championship, although Michael did actually guest last year on our away round at Alton Park, somewhat controversially. I seem to remember he picked up a bit of damage for the Tyne Castle Garage prepared guest car. But uh, no guest car this year. We do have Vic Kobe Jr. back with us then. He leads across the line again from Chris Smiley, who's closed up the gap, I think, at the expense of David Slay. So Smiley now on the offensive and looking like the man we need to watch in second place at the moment. As Sasha mentioned, some of the drivers have raced here before, certainly Vic Covey's raced here. Now, now David Slay's experience of this circuit is a little bit more fresh than some of the other drivers because he was here last year in one of his own team's XR2s. And uh, although he didn't win both the races, he did take pole position for the first race. Uh, and a win and fastest lap, that was that was June last year. This is the view from Chris Smiley, who's made the transition from karting exceptionally well. Totally different discipline, of course, moving from karts, which occupy considerably less space on the circuit, to front-wheel drive saloon car racing. But Smiley, I guess if you're a quick racer, you're a quick racer, and Smiley is just that. Hunting down the man with the most experience in the championship, Vic Covey Jr., former champion, of course, as well, Covey. And still very much part of the class of the field and the man that many regard as the benchmark in this championship the core cut machine heads up towards the mountain again David Slay closing up to once again in car number three Slay now with the fastest lap once again he's down into a lap record standards here for David Slay now remember as I said he's the least rusty of all the drivers as far as Cadwell's concerned because he was here in the XR2s but make no mistake that that should take absolutely nothing away from Slay's lap record, 147.242. That's an average around here of 72.945 miles an hour. Very, very quick and tricky circuit. Out come the boards again. This lead trio 
are well clear. Still Kyle Reid in fourth place. Fifth position is Tim Slay, who's recovered well, but that recovery seems to have uh, levelled out just a little bit. Lead us through Coffee's corner, heading into turn two and then towards Charlie's. Several different configurations you can use here at Camwell Park, including uh, in well, many days gone by a quarter mile ish stock car circuit. Camwell 2.173 miles in total, and as you can see, it's a, a really challenging track. It's a great place to come and visit and a super place to come and race or maybe even do a track day run by Jonathan Palmer's MSV. Motorsport vision concern, which means that the facilities are absolutely top notch. David Slay then gives chase in third position, car number three. Great view from David. Um, as I say, what a great recovery after lap one. He's trying to get past Tim Slay, who's just having a little nibble away there at all. Was that a mistake from, was that too far for Chris Smiley? Certainly David Slay closes in. Down through Mansfield corner. Little kick to the right, then back to the left before they go through turns 11 and 12 and then climb up the mountain. With so much racing going on in the world, you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keane, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. drop down the circuit. The many people call this place the, the mini Nürburgring. It's not quite as grand as the Nürburgring, but I can see the sentiment. Tricky old circuit and Kobe Jr. proving absolutely superb. It's the home straight on the other side of the barrier. So the barrier doing an effective job of keeping any wayward guard. You can see that very, very close it gets. I can't think of any other circuit where you get so close to another part of the track. Now, David Slay's obviously didn't have a problem, maybe Mr. Gear or something, but he's back right on the case of this lead pair who are without doubt slowing each other up and having a battle. And Slay's going to have a look at the inside. He's through. David Slay's through, surely. Chris Smiley would have known that Slay would have tried that one because he, he had a nibble a couple of laps ago. And that was a very opportunistic piece of driving. Half a gap and David Slay took it. As I always say, faint heart never kissed a pig, and David Slay goes through to second place. Chris Smiley is down to third, and he'll want second back for sure now. The Osterman down to third, and it's the XXR2 champion, David Slay, up into second. And look how much ground the race leader Vic Covey's got when we go back to him. This is the view back from David Slay to the new third place man, Chris Smiley, under blue skies. Chris Smiley's not going to be very happy, though, down to third. And also, you can see how much they were slowing each other up because Kyle Reid and Tim Slay are closing up as well so David Slay uh, qualified on pole position and a big moment on lap one down to fourth back up into third and now into second place and he's just got Vic Covey Jr in front of him doesn't look like he's got to worry too much about Chris, Slay, uh, Chris Smiley at the moment in the 22 car he's got a bit of breathing space let's see whether he can close the gap now on Vic Covey Jr out front Smiley not getting close enough to retaliate, probably just uh, regrouping at the moment, although he's closing up now as they come down into Mansfield corner. Smiley certainly hasn't given up, and he'll be just trying to work out what he knows, that you can have a little, a little go into the hairpin. You don't see too many overtakes there. And the answer to our question about how far ahead is Vic Covey is there, and it's not too far. So Vic Covey coming under pressure from Slay. Now, did Covey look in his rearview mirrors and see Slay dive down the inside on the last lap? Well, he's keep it defensive. Covey drives a good defensive race, as we've seen so far, from the efforts of Chris Smiley to go through. Slade doesn't go for it this time. Slightly wider into the corner, the corner than Vic Covey. Chris Smiley closing up as well. These three having a, a cracking scrap, with Kyle Reid in fourth closing in. Then Tim Slade in fifth position. Can't see who's behind them in sixth place, I suspect. It might be Alan Walk in sixth position, followed by Hamish Brandon and then Fiona Wallace. But we go on board with Chris Smiley. 
So through Charlie's, then a little bit of a run downhill once we get out of here and onto the park straight. And Tim Slay, or oh, David Slay, sorry, kicking up a little bit of dirt there, loses a bit of ground. This could be an opportunity for Chris Smiley to have a go for second position. Falls to the outside line. Slay's got a little bit more power, doesn't cut across, doesn't grab the line, because I think he knows that Chris Smiley isn't going to be able to go around the outside on this corner. That's exactly how it pans out. Slay hangs on to position, but here comes Chris Smiley again around the outside line. Can he do it? Switches back to the inside. There isn't room. David Slay's not going to leave half a gap as Chris Smiley did up at the hairpin. And, and it's Slay still in second position. Vic Covey Jr. coming under pressure, though, in lead position. Here they come down into Mansfield. Covey still hangs on to it. Kyle Reid has caught up with him as well. And Slay's through on the inside. David Slay. Vic Covey left the door open. David Slay's through to the lead. Chris Smiley's going to come through as well. But he tries to. But look at this. Kyle Reid, the audacity of the man in his third meeting, his first ever race meeting here at Cadwell, is putting Chris Smiley under pressure. Smiley looks up the inside as they go into turn 11. That's the outside for turn 12. Goes wide. And Kyle Reid comes through. Was there a bit of paint trading between the two? Tim Slay's coming up as well, but his brother David is clearing away. Oh, through goes Smiley off onto the grass. Smiley's on the grass. He can't keep up with Kyle Reid at the moment. This is the view from Smiley. Down the inside of the hairpin. Onto the circuit. On, off the circuit he goes. He's going to try and rejoin. Oh, and he's, ta he's tagged Kyle Reid on the exit. Smiley hits Kyle Reid recovering. Well, I'm sure there was no malicious intent there, but it was on the rejoin. You've got to be aware when you rejoin the circuit. And Chris Smiley finds himself now down in fifth position, I think. It's Vic Covey Jr. second. David Slay leads. There is Slay leading from Vic Covey. Massive gap back to third position. Well, this is an all-action race once again, as ever. The uh, Scottish Mini Cooper Cup giving us some absolutely superb racing. This is the view. There's got to be a bit of red mist here. Chris Smiley trying to get his race back on circuit look how wide he's gone eat dirt says Kyle Reid in front of him Kyle Reid I know I've said it in, before in this race and, and indeed in previous rounds but um, the, the pace of this man absolutely astounds me as a newcomer to motor racing he really is a man to watch for the future and there he is in third place and here comes Chris Smiley bang into the back Smiley He's really having a go now. He desperately wants position back. And uh, the ex-Carter looks to the outside line again. This is the same sort of tactic that we saw on David Slay when he was trying to get second position back. And uh, well, when you're racing this fast, this close, a little bit of contact is inevitable. And here comes Smiley again. Down the hill through Mansfield corner. Kyle Reid in front. Now there's half a gap there, but Kyle Reid grabs it. Smiley moves to the outside, back to the inside line as they come up towards turn 11. This is great stuff, isn't it, from Kyle Reid, who's not only learning how to uh, attack but also defend one of the uh, fancy championship runners here. Superb stuff from these two drivers. And Kyle Reid, I wonder if he's going to be able to... He's not on a podium position here, because I think Tim Slay would have... Yeah, Tim Slay went through ahead of them earlier on. So it's David Slay, Vic Covey, and then Tim Slay. And then Kyle Reid, who's still there. There's contact again with Chris Smiley, who's, who really has got the bit between his teeth. I think there was possibly a little bit of contact there. Here they come again. These two giving us um, a very, very close race. But Kyle Reid hanging on to fourth place. Here comes Smiley again. Clearly the faster car. And down the inside as it go through Coppice. It's that little shake of the head there from Chris Smiley, who goes through. So Chris Smiley back into fourth position. I don't think happy about the man who was in front of him, but he's dealt with him now. I put that well, well behind him. Through the go. There is Chris Smiley in the background, but here is David Slay, who has had a storybook race here. Pole position, massive moment on lap one. Recovered superbly from that to rejoin the circuit in fourth place, and he's chipped away since then. Who said you don't get overtaking here at Cadwell Park? This was absolutely superb. This wasn't even the reverse grid race. So Slay, it is, that is uh, on the far side of the circuit, heading towards his second win of the year. Fourth career win, if memory serves properly. Up the hill again, like the mountain, we should say, here at Cadwell Park with Vic Covey Jr. in second position. And Tim Slay has closed him down as well. So Covey, I think, will probably be going through the maths in his head and thinking about championship points down towards Barn Corner. 
This is the last corner on lap nine. 20 minutes of racing complete for the Celtic Speed Scottish Mini Cooper Cup and career win number four, second of 2011 for David Slay with Vic Covey Jr. in second place. Third place across the line now is Tim Slay. Great result for Tim Slay after he had uh, a little bit of an excursion off courtesy of Kenny McLeod on lap one. Fourth position and coming through now will be Chris Smiley. So there is Chris across the line and we look back and wait to see. Now coming through next, it's not Kyle Reid, it's Alan Walk who's next. So what's happened to Kyle Reid? Alan Walk comes across the line and takes fifth place. Well, the official results tell us that Chris Smiley was excluded from the results as a result of uh, driving standards. At the win, though, no question, David Slay from Vic Covey Jr. and Tim Slay in third. Alan Walk, an excellent fourth place, therefore. Carl Reid Carl Reed in fifth from Hamish Brandon. Fiona Wallace in seventh from Michael Falconer. Then Kenny McLeod ninth from Emma Bruce, who got the better of Elaine Marshall. Fastest lap of the race and lap record to David Slay. Now, David, first of all, congratulations on a fantastic win. But secondly, you managed to make that incredibly hard for yourself. What happened at the gooseneck oh, there? God, I think just made a real novice mistake there. Obviously, it went out. You know, it's quite a long track. It's a long period of time, 20 minutes. So I tried to preserve my tyres, but not overwarming them. Got a bit of a gap there. Wanted to try and make as big a gap as possible. Just put my head down and get going. And really, just obviously, there wasn't enough heat in my tyres for that particular corner. That speed had a massive sideways moment. It was <laughs> Full flat in the juice, just about full lock. Came back the other way, hit the grass, thought, oh, this is going to be a disaster now. And, you know, just managed to sort of drive out of it, just came out of it, ended up back on the track and couldn't believe my luck, thought, because I'm actually just going to drive around this corner now and make it through. No, went up off this, the, the slip road there, came back on, rejoined in fourth place and uh, managed to, like, hunt down the guys in front of me. And to miss Vic as well. I mean, that he was so close to the barrier, but then so close to Vic as well. And then to come through for a win, that's pretty special. Yeah, it was a really good race. I mean, that made the far more interesting. You know, I mean, start obviously coming from the lead and just like leading the race from start to finish. You know, it's it's you know a comfort way to do it. But obviously, if you get a chance to battle the way through and come back, that was just the, the best result I could have had. Now, I'm here with current championship leader for the Scottish Mini Championships. Now, Vic. Congratulations on your podium there, but what on earth were you thinking when David Slade came flying across the track in front of you, the gooseneck? I was kind of thinking he could have his own accident. Uh, no, David's been really quick this weekend, so there was a wee bit of me going, oh, that'd be just quite handy if you could uh, park that in the barrier there, but he managed to collect it all up, I don't know how. And then uh, a cracking race from us, we got into the lead, we led it by a bit, but as natural here, uh, two cars working together always quicker than one, and Chris and him caught me up, at which point I managed to destroy the diff in my car, and it was just... Uh, it was a bit nerve-wracking with the gearbox chattering away for the last four laps. Silly error to let David up the inside and take the win, but uh, you, know, I mean, you opened up by saying championship leader. Unfortunately, I'm not anymore. Uh, David's taken that off me by three oh, points, so we've got a lot of work to do in this race. Oh, well, were your gearbox managed, do you think, this time? Well, we put a new one in it, so uh, yeah. fingers crossed it's going to manage just fine for us. And If we get back in front of David, it'll be great. If not, I'm not too worried about down here. I mean, not finishing's a killer when it's double points. You don't win the championship down here. You win it at the last meeting, so... Uh, I know I can do it to the business up at Knock Hill, so if I just keep tapping away up there, as long as I score decent points here, I'll be happy. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. The club and amateur racer. Here at Go Racing TV, we salute you. And we want to give you all the tools and info to compete with the best. Find out how to do it all from your own garage by watching our club racer and autocrosser shows. GoRacingTV.com, supplying all your video racing needs. Congratulations on another podium there and you're going out for race two here just now and is your car going to hold together? I know there's been a lot of problems with gearboxes and so on. Uh, well, let's hope it's going to hold, hold together. I haven't had any trouble with the gearboxes. Uh, just sort of some of my settings got adjusted when I had a wee sort of... Uh, uh, I got tapped from the back from one of the Minimax crew, unfortunately, but I mean, it's just... Uh, yeah, the car's feel, feeling really good. Uh, it's just myself. I'm sort of 
unable to keep the pace that my brother's setting, which is fantastic. He's absolutely on it this weekend. I mean, he had a huge moment in race one and still managed to win. Yeah, he did. I don't know how he pulled that off. I mean, he's uh, he came down into the, the gooseneck there and just obviously lifted off a wee bit too much. Still on the first lap, tyres a wee bit cold, quite out of shape, and he's just it was all over the place. How he never hit anything, I don't know what happened. Somebody was looking at over him that day, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, he, he got the lap record and everything as well, you know. So he's, he's flying. Eh? I just I hope I can live with his pace today. And, see what happens. Well, good luck, but you must have had a wee giggle to yourself, did you not? Well, I only saw it when I just sort of came round. I didn't see the accident happening because I was just sort of regained myself and I'd been taken off. I came round, I just seen him rejoin the track and I thought, I'm sure we don't go up the escape road there. I'm sure that's not the way to go here. But yeah, I had a wee chuckle. Well, good luck for race two. Thank you. That's great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hey, Mish, I just wanted to catch a wee word here. Um, you were quite close to that barrier there. Yeah, um, a bit too close for comfort, I think. So um, it was a fairly hard impact with twisted the chassis legs but Minimax have got the car up and running and got us out for race one so everyone was great and it was it was it was fantastic. Um, and what do you think of the circuit? I absolutely love the circuit, it's fantastic. It's taking me a bit of time to get used to it but um, well, it's just it's just so awesome to drive. It's just unbelievable. I love it. I've I hope we get to go back. I know, I know Craig won't, won't want to come back because he's fed up with changing gearboxes, but um, hopefully we'll get to come back again. It is obviously quite a hard circuit on the cars, especially the gearboxes. You've just mentioned that there just yeah. now. Is there, is there a particular problem? Yeah, we've, um, I think we've gone through the world supply of gearboxes this weekend. We've done seven in total uh, between the cars. I had to drive to Hull last night um, and I had to go again this morning to get the parts for, for a gearbox. Um, but I drove 12 minutes of the, the race with, with no third gear. And as a result, it just completely trounced the box because I was having to really cane it in second, and you know I was having to just do what I could in fourth as well. So it, the, the the gearbox was completely wrecked. So fingers crossed, we'll get a good run out. The car's fixed. Andy's done a, a great job getting it ready. He was working till two o'clock this morning and back up again at eight to get it done. So hopefully we'll be we'll be good to go. Now, one chap that's just got a huge round of applause there is Kyle Reid, just brought his car down into the paddock. Amazing that he's going to get back out there. Obviously, after being involved with that accident earlier on, he's had a new engine and gearbox and drive shafts and radio and everything. So let's see how he gets on in race two. Richard, over to you. Thanks again, Sasha. And the reverse grid race sees Kyle Reid drawing pole position, fifth in race one. And he starts on pole in this one with Alan Walk on his outside, row two. And looking to come through quickly, Tim Slay and Vic Covey Jr. David Slay in fifth and Hamish Brandon in sixth position. Third row of the grid, Fiona Wallace and Michael Falconer, then Kenny McLeod and Emma Bruce, Elaine Marshall 11th. Chris Smiley's got it all to do from the back after his exclusion in race one. Should give us some fireworks as Chris comes through. Let's see how they go though. Carl Reid then finds himself on pole position at Campbell Park in only his third race meeting. This is going to be a big moment for him. Alan Walk on the outside. Conditions still pretty good here at Cabwell Park. And let's see whether David Slay can work his way through from FID. The reverse grid race is always a little bit more difficult. Perhaps more so here at Cabwell, although we have seen plenty of overtaking so far today. Away they go. Great start. Carl Reid gets away well. Chris Smiley breaks ranks uh, very efficiently as well and starts working through. But it's Tim Slay through the middle of the front row. From third on the grid, Tim Slay up into the lead as they go into coffees for the first time Tim Slay leads Carl Reid in second place Alan Walks looking for second side by side with Reid but I don't think he's going to come through the whole field have made a great start uh, Elaine Marshall made a good start as well beating uh, Emma Bruce off the line so she'll be pleased with her start uh, down towards the back of the field but a cracker absolute cracker then from the front uh, from the second row of the grid for Tim Slay David Slay is up into third place and challenging for second down the inside of Kyle Reid. We're not even halfway through lap one, and David Slay from fifth on the grid. Pole position, race one win, fastest lap, new ra lap record for Slay. He's proving his mastery around here, and he's up into second place with just his brother Tim to deal with before he can perhaps start to think about laying claim to a second win of the weekend. Third place, Kyle Reid, then it's Alan Walk, followed by uh, having a great run is Kenny McLeod, so Kenny McLeod in the white car ahead of Vic Covey Jr. Then it's Chris Smiley. Smiley's caught up with Covey already. So cracking start from him. The red and white car is Chris Smiley, which we should know by now from uh, race one. Another red and white car behind is Hamish Brandon. Down behind them in the black machine is Michael Falcon, the car number two. Raced in the XR2s a couple of times last year. 
still in out front it's Tim Slay we're looking at the third place train at the moment headed by car number 20 Kyle Reid Alan Walk just behind him in car number 14 and Walk comes off line looks down the inside line that's covered by Reid in third position Vic Covey uh, now is that an attacking stance or, or a defensive stance that we're, we're seeing from Covey he's coming under pressure from Chris Smiley who nips around the outside here we go on board with Smiley trying to get on pace with Vic Covey Jr here crack and run from Smiley from the back of the back of the pack and this is the way to deal with anything like an exclusion is just put it behind you get on with the race and Chris Smiley uh, he's doing that how quickly has he come through the, the field we're looking at another quality driver coming through the ranks of the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup good awareness from him there little look in the mirror to see what's going on behind him before he refocuses on Vic Kobe Jr in front of him but he's still coming under pressure from Kenny McLeod there is Kenny that those two have dealt with in the white and gold car Hamish Brander behind them you heard from the various interviews that the this is a very unforgiving circuit and the teams have been working overtime to get all these cars back out onto the racetrack so Kyle Reid running in third place Kobe has a look down the inside Kyle Reid locks up under pressure Kobe certainly knows where to apply the pressure here and look at the cars behind him it's uh, Alan Walk now been passed by Kobe Chris Miley looking at uh, Walk to see if he can go through so Kobe picking the positions up Walk looks up the inside as they climb up the mountain but Kobe surely yeah, he knows his way around here he did okay last time that scored a few points in the last visit a couple of seasons ago through Hall Benz they all go and Kyle Reid still hanging on from the former champion into the hairpin nobody thinks about putting on a, a move there we're still in, of course in the early stages of the race here that time's a little bit quicker if anything they were in race one Kobe in the pallet force car pulls out early that's a good move by Kobe got a little bit of a run coming out of the barn corner the last corner side by side with Kyle Reid and he's got a little bit more grunt uses the extra momentum and he's through into third position cracking start from Vic Covey so a podium position now for Vic Covey again that's how you win championships isn't it keep pumping away with those we had a quick look at Michael Falconer this is the view from Hamish Brandon's car so loads of work having them been done by the Minimax team run by Craig Noble over the course of the weekend and good that they've got all their cars back out on circuit all 12 cars here at Carabell Park on circuit for our second race of the weekend oh the problem there for Kyle Reid who goes into Chris Smiley oh dear and off goes off goes Alan Walk in car number 14 as well Walk's going to try and recover there was just a little bit of contact coming through there and I think that was again nothing malicious we, we haven't seen anything malicious this weekend but Kyle Reid is out there is Vic Covey Jr in third place Chris Smiley is up into fourth place. Kenny McLeod in car number six is fifth. Great to see Kenny up into the top six. And same can be said of Hamish Brandon in car number eight. The Panda car running well. Hamish uh, perhaps on course for a decent points haul here. Running eighth in the championship coming into this round. As you heard Sasha say, the championship points between David Slay and Vic Covey Jr. now reversed from where they were coming into the meeting with... David now leading the championship by a handful of points from Covey and what counts of course being an away round is a double point extra point uh, for pole and fastest lap but Covey is the faster of the two drivers at the moment on circuit as we look at Hamish Brandon this is the battle for the lead Tim Slay leading David Slay the battle of the brothers turn one Coppice then round the long right hander turn two into Charlie's Here's Covey, Billy No makes at the moment back in third position. Tim Slay makes a little bit of a mistake there. David Slay goes a little bit further wide. Be mindful of what happened earlier on. I suppose really if you're going to have an error, which is what you heard him admit to after the interview in race one, the best time to have it is probably qualifying down the inside. The, the door well opened by Tim Slay and David Slay through into lead position. Now, I'm wondering why, why Tim Slay wasn't defending that. Maybe he knows the car's not up to the job. If they slow each other up, it would allow uh, Vic Covey Jr. to come back into the mix. But Tim Slay doesn't look like he's well, it doesn't look like he's given up. Whether that was a, a mistake, it was a, that was a very big wide open door for Cabwell Park, I've got to say. So David Slay through into the lead. That's going to push him even more points clear 
of Vic Covey Jr. 12 points for a race win, doubled up to 24 for it being an away round. 10 points for second position, 8 for third, which is where Covey is at the moment. So Covey potentially 8 points down uh, on this race, although with the faster lap, that will be reduced to 6 points. As Covey said, though, the championship not won until the last round of the year, and we know that... Uh, Vic is a very, very fast and consistent driver and will take the battle back over the uh, the normal race format, which is two uh, straight forward gridded races and one reverse grid race, as opposed to just one normal race and one reverse grid race that we've got today. And it's all going to pan out over the rest of the championship. It's always an enthralling championship, Minis, and even more so this year. And look at David Slay leading Tim, who hasn't lost too much ground. Vic Covey comes through in third position enjoying the open space and setting some hot laps Chris Smiley there in 22 is in fourth position down behind them we've still got Kenny McLeod Alan Walk Hamish Brandon all in the mix Fiona Wallace still leading the ladies challenge I think Fiona might have taken the lead of the ladies championship Hi there, I'm Tom Natchew, and this is Greg Kramer. We're called the old bastards of racing in many circles. You know, I guess we met back in the late 1980s. Easy, easy. It had to be at least that far back. Glory day of some racing, too. Oh, absolutely. Trans Am was a part of the picture, and actually I learned to do pro announcing from this man around the Trans Am Championship. Oh, that is a long time ago. A very long time ago, but I'll tell you what, you take a look at Trans Am Racing in the early 90s in particular, the names that were running at that time. But the other side of the story was World Challenge was really starting to come alive at that point. And the names in that, there were sometimes you'd look at the two rosters and go, you know, I'm not sure which one is the most talent. Some amazing stuff from those decades past. And, of course, a lot of those drivers also doubling up, running amateur racing in the runoffs. And it was spectacular stuff. Now, Go Racing TV has got all of that action, Trans Am World Challenge, and even some runoff material all coming up over the next season. That's going to be something to watch. I know. To be able to relive those two decades of motorsports from the Sports Car Club of America's Pro Racing Department, Trans Am World Challenge, and then you include the National Amateur Championships, the runoff, the intense battles that unfolded there, it simply doesn't get any better than that, and it lives again right here on GoRacingTV.com. Because I need to spend more time in front of my computer. Slade brothers continue on their merry way around Cadwell Park and Tim Slade definitely hasn't been lost but you just got the feeling that that was a, a let through rather than a, a clear overtake and I mean, I'll stand to be corrected and apologise to Tim and David if that's not the case but Tim still keeping things fairly equal to his brother who's out front Vic Covey still in a bit of a lonely third place at the moment uh, banging in some quick lap times but not making too much impression on the Slay Brothers out front. So down through Barn and then the drop down to the start finish straight as we go back and see Kenny McLeod in car number six. There is Hamish Brandon. In fact, Alan walked down behind them, so walked with a bit of work to do. Good to see Alan banging in a couple of uh, strong races in this one. You may remember he, he's had a couple of nasties up at Knock Hill in uh, recent times enjoying his racing going through Dennis Michael Fogler in the background car number two this is only his third meeting in the uh, Scottish Mini Cooper Cup as well Michael running in ninth position in the Newcomers Championship he's going to improve that this weekend because we've got a couple of drivers that haven't made the journey as we go on board with Alan Walk Alan running ninth in the Championship and that's a pretty good position for Alan Walk, ninth in the championship. Bear in mind, he, he, he didn't race at round one. So he's going to haul himself a little bit further up. Great view of him racing now. Look at the inside line here. Down the inside he goes. 
and past, past Hamish Brandon. This is the view from Hamish's car. There is Allen. He's through on the inside. Very neatly done. We saw some pretty frenetic overtaking at the sharp end of race one. As you can see here from race two, these guys dicing for six, fifth, sixth position. All good, clean stuff. Hamish will be pleased to take the car home in one bit, I suspect, after a very physical weekend that the mechanics have had, the machinery has had this weekend. Tim Slay's back in lead position. So I've got to eat my words. Tim Slay is back in front ahead of David Slay. No points for laps led here like touring cars. So that is very definitely game on between the two brothers. David Slay goes wide as they come out of barn. Kicks up a bit of dirt, chasing his brother down the hill once again. Are we going to see Tim Slay? lose the lead again there he is this is going to be very very good for his confidence both in himself and in machinery up to Coffey's corner now Covey Jr let's have a look and see where Vic is I think Covey is closing the gap on the lead too he doesn't look as far behind as he was a couple of laps back Chris Miley's in fourth and doesn't seem to be making too much progress oh and a mistake from Tim Slay who goes wide that was a mistake from Tim Slay and David Slay's going to have more momentum along Park Straight they go and Slay David Slay up on the inside line outside on the outside line there but he's going to have the inside line for the next corner as they come up into Park and he's back through David Slay back into lead position Tim Slay down into third place sorry into second position and this is the view back from David Slay with Vic Covey Jr. in the background. So Tim has repassed once. Is he going to be able to do it again? No reason to, to say he can't. David Slay with the uh, win honours ahead of his brother now. 2-1 in terms of wins. One, one apiece at Knock Hill so far in the two race meetings we've had there. So Slay in front with in second position David Slay in front Tim Slay in second position third place there going up the mountain is Vic Covey Jr who is definitely getting closer to the brothers through Hall Benz then the hairpin barn corner so just coming up towards the hairpin now and David Slay's got a little bit of breathing space over Tim Covey definitely closing in in the core cut machine Palette Force car Tim Slay second, little mistake there, kicks up the dirt. Reeling off another lap, here they come to pick up the lap signals from the pit crews on the pit wall on the inside of the circuit. Quite a long way to the paddock as we mentioned in race one, it's the fair old climb up the hill. There you can see the track coming back on itself on the, the tail end, I think that was uh, Emma Bruce going through. Emma running in third position in the newcomers because Elaine Marshall is uh, holding on to position at the moment the three lady races actually all, all pretty much together position wise certainly timing position wise Fiona Wallace leading the ladies cup battle at the moment from Elaine and then Emma in third place Tim Slay on the offensive again having a look David Slay hangs on to lead position positions the car well look how close he gets so Tim Slay Demon Tweaks logo he's uh, very very close to our rear facing camera and putting big pressure on his brother as Covey starts to engage in battle and although he's not making moves here he's threatening he's threatening the second place car and that means the second place car goes defensive and he's allowing the race leader to pull away a little bit so David Slay starting to pull away Tim Slay in second looking uh, quite aggressive into the corner there here comes the fourth place man Chris Smiley Alan Walk still chipping his way through the field as well so if we've lost Kenny McLeod that means that uh, we might have had a change for Alan Walk as Vic Covey now putting a challenge oh, he's through Vic Covey's through to second place great manoeuvre by Vic Covey certainly knows how to use the more open stretches here got the momentum came through into second position let's see what Tim Slay can do about Vic Covey in retaliation because it's Covey that will now be under pressure and no pressure for the race leader David Slay who is four five lengths clear at the moment down to Mansfield corner Vic Covey in second position Tim Slay in third place it was David Slay Vic Covey Tim Slay of course in race one but it's been far from a repetitive set of races that we've had this weekend we've had some cracking action Covey for my money starting to get away from Tim Slay in third place 
up through hall bends they go so we're into towards the closing stages of our second race of the weekend here at Cadwell Park and I'm sure everybody's enjoyed their visit mechanical maladies and breakages aside David Slay though has absolutely mastered it so far there is the new lap record holder Vic Covey Jr in second position third place it's Tim Slay and now on towards the last lap there's the board going out to David Slay I'd be surprised if Covey can close that in in just uh, two miles or so around Cadwell let alone pass him so David Slay, barring any mistakes that we saw on the opening lap of race one, looks like he's going to make it a double this weekend. Pole position, race one win. Fastest lap in race one. He hasn't got fastest lap here thus far. That's with the man behind him, Vic Covey, who will take uh, quite a lot of consolation from that, knowing that he was, uh, he'll go away with the lap record here, unless... David Slay beats him on the last lap, but Tim Slay isn't finished either. And he's going to have a look at Vic Covey for second position here. Slay still putting him under pressure. Covey just keeping it down on the grass goes Tim Slay. Is he going to go in the tyres? Yes, he does. Oh, bitter, bitter disappointment for Tim Slay. There is the, on the outside, is the retired car of Kyle Reid. And through into third place goes Chris Smiley. Tim Slay recovers his second outing off the circuit so far this weekend and that's cost him a podium. He is going to be very, very frustrated about that. But it's his brother who has been the star of Cadwell Park this weekend. David Slay in car number three, the Athena car. Down through Mansfield, turn eight, now up towards turn nine. This is the bottom of the mountain complex, climbs up there. Still Vic Covey Jr. in a very handy second position and running still strongly in the championship. Covey will want to take the battle back to David Slay at the next round at Knock Hill. Past Kenny McLeod's car, so disappointment for Kenny who was running strongly in the first race of the day. Down through the hairpin for the last time. Now we know that Covey's quick through Barn and gained more momentum to make an overtake on the line but he's too far back from David Slay who's going to make it two out of two there is the chequered flag David Slay makes it two out of two and Vic Covey is delighted with second place punches the air with delight third place from the back of the field and that's a really good a, a good tonic for Chris Smiley thumbs up from Chris who ends the meeting very happy indeed fourth place and a good recovery you have to say for Tim Slay So the third win of the year, matching Vic Covey's for David Slay. Slay wins, Covey second, Chris Smiley in third from Tim Slay, with Alan Walk in fifth, and Hamish Brandon sixth. Seventh place goes to Michael Falconer. The Ladies' Cup victory goes to Fiona Wallace from Elaine Marshall, with Emma Bruce in tenth. Fastest lap, a new lap record, confirmed to Vic Covey Jr. Championship looks like this with David Slay, the new leader from Vic Covey. Tim Slay still third, Chris Smiley fourth, Kyle Reid in fifth place and Alan Walk now up into sixth. Tim Slay leads the newcomers though from Kyle Reid. Michael Faulkner up to third, ahead of Steve Clark with Kenny McLeod fifth and Elaine Marshall in sixth. Fiona Wallace takes the lead of the ladies from Elaine with Emma Bruce third, Louise Flitton in fourth then Steph McMurdo and Gemma Dreeland in sixth. Chris, congratulations. Third place from the back. Yeah. You've got to be quite pleased with that after yesterday. Yeah, it was OK. It was my fault yesterday what happened. So uh, at least that was a bit of a damage recovery the other day, getting third. But uh, just a wee problem with her car. Just whatever way the back wheels were, it just wasn't going straight. So hopefully we can get us sorted out to the next one. So we'll see how we do. Yeah, but you've got to be happy with that. I mean, that's pretty hard work. A circuit that passing isn't possible, they say. Yeah, well, we, we got a good start and we got away. And the car was, the car was sort of 95% OK. So... We got up three all right, but it was a bit of buffing and barging everywhere. But thankfully, we got through and we got a bit of a result out of it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's been an absolutely fantastic weekend for David Slay. Arrived here second place in the championship and he's gone away with a five point lead. Make sure that you join us next time back at Knockhill Racing Circuit for more action from the Celtic Speed Scottish Mini Cooper Cup. <laughs>